Ah, oh, that was a great, great pick of me at the end there, isn't it? <laughs> hello, hello. Hello and welcome everyone. Hi everybody. Good evening or good morning wherever you are. <laughs> it's good evening for me. Exactly. Wherever you are on this realm. Hello, good day, good evening, good night. Welcome and thank you for joining us. Yes. Uh, yes, today we, we are going to get into... Oh, sorry. What was that? Do you want me to play now or should we leave that for a bit Yeah, later? sure. We got a new uh, little intro to test out that Cam just put together. Alrighty. And uh, then after that, uh, Michelle wow, has a, another wonderful presentation to put or present to all of us on water towers and uh, their correlation to uncovering the truth of this ancient covered up civilization and technology. Absolutely. Indeed, indeed. All righty, uh, let's whack this little intro on and then we'll get into it. Um, can you see that? Now I can't see the play button. Ah, oh, that's no good. There. There you go. This is the yeah. bit, isn't it? That confuses me. It's like, we choose to come here to get this sorted out, or is this just. It seems a little unfair, doesn't it? That, that you know, when we seem to be here and there's this parasite messing up our experience. And you know, I know in my own life, the times that I've made major changes, it was like it became more painful not to change than to change. That was when I made made big changes. You know, it's it's this whole ridiculous narrative of. It's, you know, it's an unsafe world. There's not enough for you. It's scary. Everyone's out to get you and. Technical difficulties. Uh, not hearing sound on that cam. Thank you, Anne. Ooh, that video clip is awesome. Real working Antiquitech. Uh, Cam, there's no sound on the video though right now. We, we can't hear you or the video. It means something what can't you hear the video? Than it would have even a few years ago. And it's our free will. Now we can. Ah. I think you're muted. Oh, well, hang on. That's no good. Let me re rewind it. <laughs> well, again, take two. Real science, you can actually produce free electricity, and this is part of what Tesla was doing, is the differential between the top of the spire to the ground actually creates an electrical differential that you then connect to another wire that goes into the ground, your grounding, put that into the, the third phase in your circuit, and then you have a bell ring circuit, and that actually produces plasma electricity out of the air. Like you're, it's real technology. These things actually function producing electricity. It's crazy. The movies are the truth, and the news is the lies of complete flipped You know, when you look at everything with new eyes, and you come across information like she was born into a very wealthy family with elite connections. You know, it means something very different now to me than it would have even a few years ago. And it's our free will that they've really also messed with because we've been lied to and we react based on lies. Just getting their independence in there and end up in civil wars for 20, 30 years um, happens a lot. Because we keep choosing to pick up the gun and use it on ourselves 
instead of building and uniting and accepting that we are one people, one spirit, one harmony on one plane that together unite it and achieve anything we dream of. So do you want to, you know, wake up or do you want to just keep going along because it's, it's, it's change is too difficult? And then give them pieces of information that they will then pursue themselves and look into and then they'll wake themselves up. I was going to mention it's the whole red pill, blue pill of the Matrix. I mean, that of the movie. And you can consider that movie as a documentary um, because they're telling us something about what's happening here. So do you want to, you know, wake up or do you want to just keep going along because it's change is too difficult. Wake up. Alrighty, there we go. Great job, Campbell. Oh, can oh, you hear me? <laughs> Thank you. Not that I made the content, of course, but yeah. <laughs> Some wise words. <laughs> Everything is a work in progress for all of us <laughs> in this journey we're on. <laughs> exactly. The, the grand work. The grand work. At least we're out there doing it. <laughs> we're trying to. <laughs> exactly. As long as we're moving yeah. forward, then we're doing something right. And getting up in the morning. <laughs> Even as slow as it may be. <laughs> moving forward in 15 million directions at once. but. <laughs> Campbell, I do commend you because I am not a morning person at all. And in fact, uh, if it wasn't for my nocturnalness, we probably wouldn't get nearly uh, half the streams done that we do. <laughs> and I'm glad you compromised yeah, with 8 p.m. for me. It's like <laughs> that hour makes a difference to where I don't feel quite so deadhead. <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I can go I'm, earlier I'm, too. Like, I can go earlier than this next time if it's easier. I'm, I'm like you, Campbell. I'm a morning person. I get all my creative yeah, stuff I'm done up, in the morning. Like, <laughs> on the same. By, by the afternoon, I'm just like, uh, it's all gone. But as soon as like right. the sun hits my face or light, I'm just, I'm literally standing up before I've opened my eyes, and I'm like, oh, it's daytime. Like I, 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 I don't know how people roll over, you know, how people wake up and then they roll over and go, oh, I just need to sleep. I just cannot, I can't do that. It's, I just can't do it. It's, it's weird. Strange hey, Buffy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just have to share a happy synchronicity before I get into my presentation. <laughs> um, this Yay. evening I was, I was driving home around, 440 stopped at the traffic light and my my win I, I don't have air conditioning in my car so I have to keep my windows rolled down and the guy sitting next to me in his car had his window partially down and he looked right at me and he said your tires almost flat and I didn't know that so I thanked him and I was half a mile from the tire store in the same direction as home and I managed to pull in there and get my tire filled up before they closed at five and the air hasn't leaked out yet so i think it was just low <laughs> but it was like perfect because wow. had the guy not said anything i probably yeah. would not have known and you know ended up with a flat <laughs> flat tire it would have been a mile past it with a flat tire yeah. <laughs> it just just saves time and trouble in the right place at the right time that's the thing, like if we just, if, you know, if we stop judging, you know, what comes our way and we sort of let it flow, it, it always works out for the best. It's only when you start judging things and saying, this should have happened and it should have happened at this time on this date. That's when things go badly. Exactly. Yeah. The universe unfolds exactly as it should or it's meant to, right? As the saying goes. Exactly. Exactly. So, do you want me to jump into it? Exactly. Absolutely. Yep. Let's get into okay. it. All yes. right. I'm Hello, gonna... everyone in chat. Thanks for joining us. And today is Water Towers. It's Water Towers. I was going to 
do more, but with everything else going on last week, I didn't have a chance to put it together. And, and this is really plenty of material, but I was going to do water towers and bell towers. But this will cover a lot of ground as it is. And I'm going to go ahead and cool. start with my PowerPoint and, and just say that this starting point for me, which is the Sulphur Springs Water Tower in Tampa, Florida, is, is pretty interesting because I became aware of it the summer that I started waking up to this ancient civilization. So I found the North American star tetrahedron that I talk about, which is the Star of David that you find when you connect major cities in North America, um, that I found about January 2016. And in July, June or July of 2016, I had flown to Tampa. Um, I have a lot of family in Tampa, Florida, in that area, Central Florida, and my mom was going to a a family reunion so I was there to take her and you know bearing in mind I had just started waking up to this and I'm I'm passing on the interstate and I, I see this tall structure that looks like a lighthouse and Tampa's next to the water but this light this particular structure is not that close to the lighthouse it's it's pretty far inland and so that kind of stuck in my mind and um, in 20, last year, so in 2020, I took my mom to live in an assisted living facility in the place where she was born and grew up. And on my last day there, I spent the day exploring this water tower and the Sulphur Springs neighborhood of Tampa before I left the next day. So I spent a fair amount of time here just you know looking around and finding relationships between a lot of the structures there um but there's really a lot of interesting things that stand out about this um the first of that being that it's a water tower or that's what we're told that it is this structure is huge i mean the pictures don't do it justice the picture on the right is a photograph that i took myself that thing is massive and it's neglected. Um, I was the only one there. You have the beautiful old oaks there, but the you know the parking lot was in bad shape. I was the only car in the parking lot. Um, and if you look at the postcard on the left, it says Sulphur Springs Water Tower, 210 feet high, elevator shaft. Elevator shaft in a water tower? to the top for automatic what? electric elevator. So what's up with that? You know, first thing that jumps to mind. And um, how can that be a water tower? It's full of holes. <laughs> it's like, you know, again, and again, that I think the resemblance to the lighthouse is significant. Um, and I don't have all those connections in my mind and, you know, just kind of putting it out there for other minds that, you know, might be able to work on this. I know there's a connection between the lighthouses and the star forts and this free energy system that the original civilization had built. I know there's a connection. I just, I just don't know how it all works together. And when this particular water tower was operational, it was said to have stored 136,000 gallons of water pumped from an artesian well with the water tank occupying the upper quarter of the tower. So that's partial answer oh, to your question God. that it's not the whole tower. Uh, this still doesn't explain the elevator though, or w what's going on here. And that the seven floors, seven floors occupy the lower three quarters. Okay. So, you know, and obviously this, this, Cool little building's not there anymore. Yeah, but so it, it, was that a pump station or something? Or I, oh, it was an elevator then, actually, wasn't it? Not a water so, tower. So, yeah, so there's you know was. something going on with this that's not fully explained. And what we're told in the historical records, you know, we've got this article from 1927 um, that confirms that yes, there's a 
full automatic elevator with a six foot shaft. And we have the name of a cement contractor, Grover Poole, who was said to have constructed it. And it was supposed to have been done for developer and realtor Josiah Richardson. Again, this is what we're told in the historical record to ensure an adequate water pressure. And um, it was built to supply the building which housed the Sulphur Springs Hotel and Apartments, which was on the second floor of this building. Maves Arcade on the first floor was said to have been the first shopping mall in Florida. Okay, so they built the water tower, we're told, in 1927 to provide water pressure, to make sure there was enough water pressure for this, this building. Okay, this is what you're going to find if you go look for the history. <laughs> it just doesn't make any yeah, sense at all. I'm okay. trying to work that out of my head. It's hurting. Um, so so that, that means that that tank, what they're they're saying is that that tank at the top has a shaft going straight through the middle of that thing where you know the elevator is supposed to be because it has to be connected to the water system under the ground or it can't regulate anything because it's not part of anything um i have heard that theory before though that it was that they were used as like a like a valve like a regulating valve for, for pressure to, to let air out of the system and things like that but but why would you pump water all that way up just so you didn't have to pump it down again, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Right. They pump it up exactly. to sit there so that it's, it's free like it when, would, they, when they let it down. But it would I mean, require electrical make sense. to get it up there, right? It's not like a gravitational aquifer in the plumbing of that sort of water no. tower. It would need for it to have any purpose like that. It would have to have massive storage on top, not just going up and dropping down to the same amount like it. Yeah, it's absolutely ludicrous, and it definitely looks more like a lighthouse or a uh, prison tower or something along those lines than any sort of water tower for yeah, airport tower, yeah, like a city that hasn't even been built yet. Like you know, and what the and, purpose that this building at, and was? The size of it, and they guess. say it was built for two buildings. Like they built that just. To get water to a couple of buildings it's come on yeah, yeah and like i it's said i mean more rock in that than the buildings it's it's supplying this water i mean there's i i could not <laughs> in any of the photos i take i took of this i could not give the same size that it actually is again it's massive at the base and then mm. when you look up now um, it's supposed to have uh at the foundation it's 45 feet or 14 meters deep. So it's, and that there was oh, a, okay. the it's water coming, was yeah. pumped from, from an artesian well. 136,000 gallons of water pumped from an artesian well is what we're told about it. In and, and then, okay, Thomas now does this picture, <laughs> does this picture look familiar? You know, you kind of saw it in your intro there with the flood. Um, Tampa Morning Tri yep. Tribune, Friday, September 8th, 1933. Um, he lost, the guy that owned this building and that commissioned the water tower lost all of his <laughs> properties <laughs> in Sulphur Springs in 1933. <laughs> um, when the Tampa Electric Company Dam... <laughs> There was a dam that collapsed and flooding ripped through downtown Tampa. The Tampa Electric Company dam collapsed. So. It collapsed. Yes. So, again, there's there's questions in here because there sure are a lot of floods going on during this period in history. There's a lot of fires going on and that have been going on in the 1800s, 1900s. I mean, it's like a never ending problem. Mm. floods and fires it is <clears throat> and 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 it's this same narrative of they can build that water tower and it's still standing there almost perfect you know 100 years later um but they can't build a dam like yeah. you know, it's this it's just like the buildings isn't it when you see the wooden shacks next to the 
the big, you know, ornate buildings. And they're like, yeah, yeah, they were built in the same year. And it's like, yeah, okay, all right, yeah, yeah. It just doesn't make sense at all. So the dams, is, is do, do we, could that be part of, like, the, well, the flood, do you think it was a worldwide flood or do you think it was individual <laughs> No, I, I think there was, I okay, I think it could have been a combination, the one that wiped everything out to begin with. So that would be like the mud flood concept, um, which I place yeah. a, a lot of belief that something like that happened. I mean, there's just too much evidence from everywhere that places were literally encased in mud and dug out. And, you know, thankfully, people post all their pictures on the Internet and the Internet's forever. And, you you know, you, you dig through these historical pictures and there's all kinds of real gems of information that that actually document mm -hmm. the whole idea of a mud flood. Now, and, and whether it was like one flood or a series of floods, it, it you know, I'm I'm open to either. I think it happened within a definite period of time. Um, but, you know, very open to the idea that there was more than one. And um, I think these kinds of floods that were specific to cities were intentionally created to, you know, wipe out whatever so they could bring in the new, the new stuff, you know, and, it, and again, it, yeah, it's yeah, in city and, and after city after city. The cleanup crew. Right. Yeah. It gives them a good excuse to bring in all the, you know, emergency responders, doesn't it, Richard? <laughs> what are we seeing now, right? Um, I mean, it's. I was watching that some of e, the Ewa and non videos yesterday, and mm -hmm. he talks about, you know, the basically, you know, the, I think, you know, sort of Philip uh, Drews in and, and talks about it too. Like basically, the whole world being um, a mine, you know, basically an open cut mine, and and to the point. Where he says, you know, a lot of the the valleys and things that we have and gorges, they're all just mines, and a lot of the lakes we have are flooded mines. And he talks about a lot that things just got flooded out, and it's interesting that we find all these lighthouses out in the middle of the ocean, you know. And there's always this question of how the hell did they build that in the in the ocean? How do you get a foundation down there? You know, were they once on land, you know, and the water's literally risen, you know? whatever and and so it was a completely different world at some point um, i think he even talks it at some point he says that there were no oceans it was just pretty much flat and we just started digging holes and, and piling up the, the you know the the materials and they became the hills and the holes became the lakes and who knows? Uh, and i i have a i have a, a bit of a different perspective on that but you know the earth has definitely been mined for sure in the last couple hundred years i mean there's big huge mines like in the far north and different places that are kind of remote that you know they're just hauling away all kinds of resources and minerals and things like that um yeah and all like what looks like <laughs> the tailing ponds that are like the fake volcanoes and stuff like that or even especially the grand canyon and all of the square like um edges and temples and stuff that were put in there it seems like it could have been a mine that they then dug out and then built the temple complex out of from mining and stuff like that yeah. you know and i guess where i really differ is i i do think that there was a really positive benevolent civilization for a very long time uh, and I agree fully with and that, and yeah, that yeah. they that that they yeah, i agree um, yeah. I'm sure they mind, but I think they mind responsibly. <laughs> you know, the same idea as, um, you know, when Native Americans take take a life, they they pray for it and they they thank the life for the food. You know, I'm, I'm talking about like um, mm. killing an animal for a meal. You know, yeah, there's not, a respect ex, a respect to change, but they're not just killing indiscrim indiscriminately. Um, I know at Pinnacle Mountain in Arkansas, but, which is a pyramid, is there's a quarry right next to Pinnacle Mountain that I think was used in ancient times, um, and I think probably a lot of quarries are like that. They're, they they come from ancient times, but I think there's a big difference between the old world and the new world in terms of resource extraction, and 
I think the old world um, extracted resources to enhance the civilization. I think the new world order, so to speak, extracts it for profit and doesn't care about the yeah. the effects on the environment or the people. The damage. They just you know they just take it all exactly. and when it's gone, the, they leave and they yeah. go somewhere else. <laughs> so to me, yes, the mining mm. is a big well, issue. Just that, I mean. <clears throat> how much crap do we have that we don't need? You know, that literally ends up in the bin within a few months. And, but, but behind that, to get that in your hand is all this mining, all this destruction. And it's really for stuff that we don't even need. Like you said, it's just so they can control us with money and power. It's just madness. So, so that that's where I would differ. I don't think, um, I think the problem with yeah. random mining has been more in the last couple of hundred years. Um, but I do, I do understand yeah. and agree that um, in terms of what actually caused the cataclysm, you know, it could have been, you know, frequency weapons, direct energy weapons, nuclear weapons, you know, it could have been applied at different, because like an earthquake, if it's a high enough magnitude will cause the ground to liquefy, which is the same idea as a mud flood. So, yeah, you know, whatever they did to cause the Earth's crust to liquefy, um, there's clear evidence and fo clear photographic evidence from all over the world that there's that something happened. And, you know, I, I think those that are researching this find common ground with that. OK, we know something happened. When did it happen? Who was here? How did this happen? And that's where we start to diverge. <laughs> but we're all looking for, you know, mm. we're all trying to put this puzzle together. <laughs> but it's complicated because yeah. there's so many different layers it's, to it. Yeah. And well, I, mean, <clears throat> I was just going to say, and the lies that we've been so there's told. T there's definitely, oh, you, <laughs> you go, you go, you go. <laughs> the, the lies we've been told so we wouldn't know what the heck was going on are just too you know countless so mm. that's yeah, that's exactly. part of it too in the base like, there's, there's two sort of major viewpoints isn't there one is there was this amazing you know civilization that was all you know for the empowerment and betterment of man and the other is it's a prison planet you know, they're pretty much polar opposites, aren't they? And, and it became you know, I a think prison that the plan. prison planet could definitely be. Yeah, that's what I think. Yeah, I don't yeah. think it started off as one, but but there's, there is definitely a big um, narrative of of this is a prison planet. We've been sent here. You know, it's it's we're locked up kind of thing. But I, I see it more as uh, it's almost like you talk about in the in the time. Um, with the time loop, you know, the, the um, what is it, 1942, 1492? It's, it's right. like they've come, like, it's like there's just been a program put over the top. And, and we, and I've said it before, for all we know, all this antiquity tech could still be working. We just can't see it. We're, we've just right. had a program which is basically a perspective and that tells us what we believe is true. And, and, and if it's not true, then we can't see it. So I agree. I think it was all good, but what's happened is they've just been messing with our thoughts, our our frequencies, our interpretation of what's going on, and of course they wipe out all the history, and and replace it with their crap, and and here we are. Right, and I think <laughs> we're, we're talking... almost out of it. I think. I, think <laughs> I, I agree. <laughs> I'm. That's what I'm playing for, um, but I think this only goes back two to three hundred <laughs> years. I, I think prior to you know the prior old world was very positive. I, I don't think we would see the le level of integration of infrastructure that we see all over the, the earth. And I'm going to give some examples of that in this presentation. We would not see that level of integration mm -hmm. if it was not a harmonious, balanced, integrated civilization. And and mm -hmm. then the controllers came in yeah. and and reversed everything for their benefit. And wiped our memories of exactly it, the true history, and they want to control us. They want to control the resources. They they want everything. And uh, up until recently, they had control of the narrative, but they don't have that anymore. They lost that with the internet. <laughs> even even though they, they they developed the internet <laughs> for control, they lost control of narrative. 
and you know once people start waking up mm. you know there's no there's no turning back and it's just a matter of you know not people being ready and you know keep keep getting it out there and so i'm going to give some other examples yeah, hang on just a sec okay yeah. so anyway they tell us in the, you know let's see what did i say so just six years after they got this tower working to provide water pressure for this complex yep. here it was already flooded out <laughs> it didn't take long and you know again this is just to try to they, give an idea of, the of the size of this thing i mean you know i i, I guess i needed another person there to stand in front in front of it to give you a, a real idea is, of it. is that a the goal old, it looks like it was at one time I'm sure they don't want anybody going in yeah, there. Okay, so that totally was a door. Totally, <laughs> totally yeah. it was facilitated, of course. Right? And you know, you you've got the fancy, you know, stylization going on here. The only thing that's wrong with this building is it's it's neglect. <laughs> I mean, obviously, structurally, it's still in good shape. Yeah. Okay, I just want to mention one more thing about this. So from its construction in 1927 until 1971, the water tower provided artesian well water to both businesses and residences in the immediate vicinity, at which time the city of Tampa was said to have forced the end of its water piping operations. So it was still working, we're told, um, but then they stopped it the city forced it to stop. And so again, it, if you look into it, it said there was, it was built on top of an artesian well. Um, so there's like an endless mm -hmm. supply of water <laughs> that's under natural pressure without pumping. And what happens when you get the city utilities involved, you know, you go from probably not paying a whole Whole bunch yeah. to starting to have to pay for it so you get your city water utilities bill mm. every month and, and so it's harder for them to you know dump chemicals into water towers isn't it all that all that fluoride and stuff especially out of <laughs> out of what bernie <laughs> Uh, the okay. underground artesian aquifers and wells. Mm -hmm. You know, again, I think there was a, a whole of, lot more to these water. to these underground aquifers and everything that you know we can't even imagine because this civilization was was pretty advanced. Uh, absolutely, this is, this is the thing. I mean, am I sort of looking at this as a single thing? But but when you look at it, you know, star forts, canals got the massive dike systems, which we're told are just in Holland, but of course they're not, they're everywhere. Windmills, you know, it's just everything is, you know, the big water wheels as well, which there's still a few like the machine of Marley or that kind of stuff. It was clearly a water based, like that was clearly looking at water as their energy, as their current, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. we've got, it's just the, the whole, it's all, and it's all clearly one system. We just don't know how it all integrated and know how it all worked. Absolutely. And it's that, like, even today, we don't see water as energy, yet it's like at probably 20 or 30 percent of the overall world's energy grid is generated through hy or hydroelectric dams and water today, right? And they claimed there wasn't any electricity, yet we have the atmospheric. Uh, electricity books and chapters in the old science books but then there's all these old water wheels and all the mm -hmm. um the wind the um windmills everywhere too right that both of those probably mm -hmm. were for mm -hmm. using generating some sort of power but uh please do continue michelle yeah, I will. totally agree bernie bernie and that's an excellent point because i mean i've seen water wheels in ancient egypt that just like water wheels from more modern times. I mean, big, huge ones, you know, and gears, <laughs> you know, you see gears in these um, yeah. marvelous machines of the industrial revolution. And I've seen a, 
a, a, a big, huge gear in what was called a sugar mill in Belize that had a gigantic tree growing out of it. I mean, like a huge tree with this huge huh. cog out of this building. And it's like, oh, this is a sugar mill. mill. And it's like, yeah, right. <laughs> that's another thing. That's yeah, right. They call these ruins sugar mills. And it's, you know, they removed but, critical thinking from yeah. so, school curriculum. So people wouldn't even know to think about it. <laughs> I guess. Literally. You're not allowed to think where you get that big red cross on your paper. <laughs> you know, it, it's thinking is bad. Thinking is bad. You've got to memorize and regurgitate in order to do well in school. So the next one is mm. um, another thing about mining too is just what we we're talking about is the word mine, right? It's mine, mine, mining. Mm -hmm. Come in and take really everything. <laughs> That's really good. So before I move on from Sulphur Springs, I just wanted to point out that it was from my in-depth study of Sulphur Springs that when I did research of Shepherd's Bush in West London on, based on somebody's suggestion, that I, I noticed the correlations between Sulphur Springs in Tampa, Florida and Shepherd's Bush in London. And, you know, starting with both places have a water tower in the vicinity. You've got the Thames water tower in that general area. I think it's in Hampstead, but it's like right next to Shepherd's Bush. Um, that was when I made the connection between racetracks and airports. Um, and then other people started saying, check the, sending me leads, check this out. And I started finding more and more and more that are or like in some kind of configuration like this, an angle of some kind and a short distance away, you know, just a few kilometers or miles from each other. Um, so you've got Shepherd's Bush here and I've got the thumbtack at a Greyhound racing track or what used to be the White City Stadium track, which turned into a Greyhound Derby and Heathrow Airport. And this is Tampa International Airport. And this is Sulphur Springs, where there was also a Greyhound racing track in Sulphur, Sulphur Springs. And because I had spent the day there, I I knew about the Greyhound racing track. And, and then when I saw the White City track and just started seeing all these correlations, um, you know, to me, it's, it's quite statistically significant not only here but in other places as well that you have these racing tracks and airports and all kinds of other things in the same configuration you've mm. got sports stadiums and you know they're all kind of clustered in the same part of town in different cities railroad tracks nearby and there's something going on with that and then the other point i want to make is just a similarity between the hillsborough river and tampa which, you know, you see it looks like it's kind of been cut off or drained a little bit here. Um, but you've got the same pattern going yeah. here with the Thames in London. And it's basically the same idea right down mm. to this, you know, you know, double hump yeah. thing going. Um, and and yeah. again, it, it, this is not just these two places. You can find that configuration. All yeah, over. yeah. You see them everywhere that meanders. I'm wondering if that's to do with with frequency. Like if you've got water and current coming in, every time it you know hits the bank and, and changes direction, if you is that somehow yeah changing the frequency of the water or charging it or something? I, I think it's, it's, like, it's, it's like doing it's something. Through some kind of a circuit. It's doing mm. something. I I. I I've seen so many of these. I just, in my mind, there's, I have no doubt that that's not natural. And they're, they're like canals. Oh, of course they not. They have masonry no, banks and, there's no and, way um, it's yeah. <laughs> and, and that's just two examples, yeah. but I've got, and, and we have these examples. things called, um, like billabongs in o uh, Oxbow Lakes, I think. Well, that's what I was told they were called in other countries, but billabongs, which are basically, 
just the little curve of that river and they say well what happens over time is is the river just decides not to go through the curve and it just makes another thing and goes straight across makes a straight river and you get left with this little curved lake a billabong we don't see that any i got told this when i was you know there was a big story and that uh, they don't exist these billabongs do not exist like sometimes you'll see a lake or something and i go oh that's a billabong but as far as them being the cutoff bits of of you know meanders on river they don't that's ridiculous i, I do it's, have and, and why wouldn't that why would nature um, not just go straight this, in the so, first place sorry i, I in Calgary, there in 2013, there was a massive flood, and on the Elbow River, um, I did see the formation of an actual oxbow lake take place, and I have taken geology in university. And that said, that that's one part of like the natural formation, but simultaneously, uh, Michelle, with the amount of um, like engineered terraformed uh, rivers and systems that you've found, and especially what I've noticed in a couple of the canals that you pointed out in the old world systems, they're actually giant constructed Tesla valves that they've engineered into the river to uh, divert and um, I guess limit the flow without even having to dam it essentially. And that is something uh, much, much, much more to it. But uh, as for the actual Oxbow okay. Lake, yeah, yeah, those yeah. I have seen firsthand formed and uh, can, <laughs> I, I'm going to be uh, so, doing a little drone action down in there anyways. You're going to uh, burst one balloon. All right. I, We're gonna you know, I, <laughs> I think, I think there's, um, so, I, I'm going to say, I think you're, oh, you're both right. I it, mean, exactly. I, I don't, I don't think that all oxbows <laughs> are created from the process that you saw, <laughs> Bernie. I yeah, think I right? think there's more, mm. much and more going on here. Going to your point, Campbell, mm. the oh, uh, I could see it in a flood kind of situation. Completely different, especially in Australia, and uh, how there's um, completely different water systems and environment there, where it doesn't make sense for there to be all of. Uh, these little oxbows and well, how we don't really have flooding water runs or yeah. yeah right that there isn't any rivers or whatnot there in the first place and that was definitely something completely different and that could actually even tie into what was mm. the ancient mining if there's the um, like these spill piles close to them or the uh different canyons and dugouts and massively terraformed areas right so um, I just had to throw that in there for like the skeptics and stuff, right? And I'm glad that you clarified, Michelle. Right? Exactly. <laughs> there, there's two different things, and it's like both exist simultaneously, hmm. and that uh, just in general, people have to come to the accepting that both realities, both facts, and a lot of things can exist simultaneously within themselves, like what the proof or existence and or idea of one thing doesn't have to wipe out the possibility or the reality of another. But chances right. are it's a little bit of both yeah. as always. You know, and again, I, I have too many examples yeah, well, of, of things like this and... to put in one place. But I mean, even when you look at, at mm. um, there's a big bends of the, of the rivers. Um, you know, big bends. I've seen them all over the world, and horseshoe bend in Arizona, and I've seen the same looking thing in China. Yeah. And I've seen, the those, seen those ones you know, are possible. I 100 like, <laughs> especially how they go down so deep into these canyons, where it's like that would take millions or billions of years for it to actually erode that much rock into that same position, and there's just no way that it wouldn't have spilt over in some flood and gone elsewhere and would have just stayed in that one thing. Like that's the impossibility. And that's where there's probably uh, some sort of like plasma catastrophe or some sort of I, thing something I, happened. Or, or to add to the, the mix, it's, it was engineered. 
Oh which yeah, yeah, I think well, it, that's what I'm saying. Like yeah. it was engineered beforehand, and then like the old advanced society and uh, the, their buildings, their runes, and then like some plasma catastrophe or giant event happened, which then made it erode and look like it's natural sort of thing over the last ten or twelve thousand years. But that there, the more you look into, it, especially areas like that, it looks like it's all block work. It looks like it's old buildings. And especially, for instance, like the Grand Canyon or the Badlands, all these different like pyramid looking sites, those are 100% ancient ruins from uh, a couple of resets ago, at least, is what I would suspect. Okay, so and this is what I'm talking about. So this is mm -hmm. Big Bend in Texas, and this it, is exactly. Horseshoe Bend in Arizona. Right? How are they identical like that? Like, look, that's a oh, platform with like a building right there at the end of each one. It looks like. Yeah, and, and I mean, how does it go into almost like a, a full circle coming out? Right, like that, that. That's impossible with how they claim the erosion. Like it, it couldn't go like this. Yeah. The way all of them are like no. that. Hundred percent, right. Michelle. You're bang yeah. on that. That is a sign of something from a far gone lost age but definitely and, intelligently engineered. Right. And I do see this kind of thing as very ancient um, architecture, yeah. engineering, whatever you want to call it. But I've got, again, I've got more examples than this in different places. And I just don't see that as natural. No, there, um, there's just no way. And no. As, especially mathematically speaking of coincidences. And I love how you compile all of the images, Michelle, of just one after another, after another of examples where it's just absolutely mathematically, statistically impossible that we have these identical um, uh, ruins, geology, but ruins are ancient mm. eroded architecture from lost ages. Yeah. I mean, it's, and we're going to get into more, you know, really suspicious stuff um, like this one. Um, so this is the Alhambra Water Tower in Coral Gables, Florida, near Miami. It was said to have been built in 1924 and was part of the city of Coral Gables domestic water supply system until 1931. 1924 built, in 1931 it was disconnected from the system and abandoned after the water company started buying water from the city of Miami. So I'm going with what's in the written record. Uh, does it make any sense to build something massive and solid like this and only use it for seven years? Right. Like every, and like every single place, like every example you pull up, Michelle, it's the same story. And like, uh, I love also how John Levi gives these same examples of which if I hope you saw his uh, last week's video because he gave you a nice good shout out there Michelle but it's it's just it, it's insane like oh we we built this massive structure that in all reality would have taken them the same amount of time if not longer than it was operational for just to build but uh, you know <laughs> when, when we were in these wars suffering famines and diseases we just had all of this extra resources to waste and stop using like it's ridiculous but and this particular but what about like that it's not feasible right so the government the government basically get their own water and go oh well we're going to supply one so this guy goes out of business and the government don't go along and go oh hey, how about we buy that tower off these things that's built on top of a natural well and it's just got free water flying through it. They just leave it there to rot. That's right. been, that's now, this one, was, this one was saved from demolition and purchased by the city of Coral Gables for what was described as a token sum. You know, I don't know how much that was, but I guess not very much. And it was said to have been restored in 1993 from old photographs. You know, so are we seeing the example of these two you know, beautiful, sturdy towers in Florida of these endless natural sources of water, like you're saying, Campbell being shut down in favor of metered water and control of this essential life mm -hmm. resource. I mean, is is that what this is about? Yeah, well, you know, besides the fact that, exactly. you know, this is, <laughs> it was, they had to have an explanation for it because <laughs> it was part of the original civilization. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, that, it still looks like a lighthouse. Scenery and all their chemicals <laughs> and all that kind of crap. A hundred percent. Like, how <laughs> how is it a water tower yet the top where the water should be stored is the skinniest, smallest point of the structure? You know, like it, it's just ridiculous. It's like you've got a dome going there That's and some kind of antiquitec going on. Got a dome. Yep. Fire. So, yes, yeah, so for some reason it you did right mention, here in um, the middle of it. <laughs> That's the viewing deck. That's the viewing deck, Michelle. Oh, yeah, Come of on. course. <laughs> Every water Every tower, water has tower needs a viewing deck. deck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's just crazy, isn't it? Um, you mentioned that um, airships may mm -hmm. have. You know, we've all seen the photos, the pictures of the airships on, you know, the Eiffel Tower and the Chrysler Tower, not the Eiffel, the uh, uh, Empire State. And, you know, the top of that looks fairly similar. We've even got a little landing, you know, platform up there. And just say it did have water in it, is, is there a possibility that they were refueling with hydrogen and these were just refueling stations for airships? And I, I want to know about the elevator. And I've got another one of those coming up here in just a moment. This one it didn't <laughs> yeah. say, but I'm well, I'm just kind of that would make sense on... for, the, for the airships, wouldn't it? <laughs> exactly, it doesn't make sense for a water tower, but it does for a docking station. Mm. And there, there's a comparison of how the Alhambra Tower used to look and how it looks today. So they monkeyed with it a little bit there, but. You know, same idea, but again, yeah, you've got that, this, yeah, they've changed this beautiful do dome going on up here. You know, it looks like it was more than a water tower. <laughs> and again, it's neglected. I mean, uh, it, yeah. <laughs> and that's what they do. They have these beautiful buildings that they just leave to rot if they don't tear them down. And occasionally they, they preserve it. And I, I love, though, that they also leave some of these to wear down so that we can compare them to lots of the original first pictures of these buildings where they look even more older and worn down than the ones that are uh, left to be worn down these days. Exactly. So, yes, thank you for not tearing them all down. <laughs> Powers that were. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so this is the Ooh. Grand Avenue Water Tower in St. Louis. That's and it's said to be, Oh, that's, yeah, that's, I have seen that yeah. one. Yeah. So that's the oldest of the three water towers in St. Louis that are still standing today. And this one. How big is that thing? <laughs> this one was said to have been built by architect George Barnett in 1871, and it is the tallest freestanding Corinthian column in the world. Wow. And they're, and they're doing good work brick. in they're doing good work in 1871, aren't they? Right. Okay. <laughs> the, the... <laughs> I look at in the background that, that's uh, just stupid. That's... Too. Isn't that cool? This one oh, back yeah. here, you, you know, and you've got the that windows. Nice. That yeah. looks like the one that looks like the other water towers we were just right? looking at. Another docking station there. It does. And so, so has this column actually got like a, like a tank in it? No, no, no tank, just one pipe up and then pipe down, which makes like no sense of how without electrical pumping that it would work. But still, what's even the purpose of it? If you have an electrical pump pressure. in your water system, you already have the pressure. Why would you need to build that? It, it makes zero sense. Yeah. I mean, maybe as, a, as an excess air valve, but I mean, maybe it's one column of, you know, 40 columns that were out of the front of a really, really big building and it was part of the plumbing system. Right? That exactly what I kind of... I mean, it uh, just looks like it, looks like it should... Question. Yeah, it looks... It looks like it should be... There should be a parliament building wrapped around it, you know? It's just, <laughs> so we're told this is 1871. They're doing this in 1871 St. Louis. Just to give you a comparison... And that, how tall is that one? Do we know it? 
Um, oh. I don't know if I have the height on that one. I don't think I have that right here. Um, so, but it common, is taller. I'm just thinking scaffolding, right? Especially on, it, it's pretty hard. It's a lot harder to make scaffolding for like a column than it is for a building. Because you've got you've got a smaller base at the bottom that you've got to work from, you, you know. So it's yeah, they did a good job. Yeah, they did a great job, didn't they? Amazing. Um, so that water tower supposedly is taller than Pompey's Pillar, which is a freestanding Corinthian column in Alexandria, Egypt, that was said to have been erected between two hundred ninety eight and three hundred two A.D. Um, oh, just for comparison yeah. in, so just you know, a in time frames. Difference. <laughs> exactly. You know, and you see the base here. What a couple Let's go of back here. Looks, you know, looks kind of similar there. And, and that one actually you looks know. older, doesn't it? The one in Egypt looks newer <laughs> than, than the it, other one. It does. And then this is in Istanbul, Turkey. Um, the Column of the Goths. And it was said to have been erected sometime between 200 and 400 AD. Oh. So again, another. So what are these? Really old one. Another 2,000 years. Yeah. What what could they possibly be? Do you think that they're literally just? I mean, it doesn't even make sense that they're just like the lone column left from a building because you know what are they standing on? You know, clearly they would have had to have been part of the building, right? So what? What I wonder what column means. I was just thinking column, golem. It's very similar to golem, but there's got to be something else going on there, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, clearly these are not part of another structure, as you're saying. Yeah, no, nah, clearly, yeah. They look like they should be, but but yeah, when you think about it, that no way. They're definitely just built as a single standing column. With, with a nice little platform on the top, a flat square on the top. Yep, 2,000 years ago. No, I don't know. Do you land your hey, banana on there and refuel with a bit of mercury? What you're showing right now, that's not a water tower, though, right? That's just a call. That's, that's what we're told. These are the stories that were told about them. The one in St. Louis is a water tower, mm. and this one in Egypt and the one in Turkey are both pillars. Right, it, exactly. So it, it's more but, but likely the one in, in that St. Louis America, isn't. Yeah, so this it's one's not really a water, a water tower. That one is because it doesn't have a tank in it. They claim there's a pipe it's going up pipes. and then down, and that it's yeah. adding pressure, water pressure to it. But it's like the you'd already have to have that same amount of pressure to get it up there in the first place. Like it doesn't add any extra so benefit whatsoever. It, it, it just makes just no to come sense. Down so again. <laughs> it, it's more likely that they are just these leftover resonating pillars, the uh, obelisks or whatever. And uh, Michelle, I believe you were getting into oh, some yeah. research. Was it you that uh, of how they were these obelisks in columns are putting out frequencies? Uh, A little bit. I ha I mean, I. It got all kinds of yeah right it's one of the projects you know, it's something that you were looking yeah. into and uh david serretta if you've heard of him he's a famous ufology ufologist out of the states uh he's on both uh, rex's leak project fairly often and alien scientists uh channel there but uh he goes in depth in the actual advanced mathematics of uh proving and calculating the specific frequencies being emitted by these uh, towers and that they all actually seem to be emitting uh, the 432 Schumann as well as a couple of other. Ooh. I just uh, want to, that's a good point. And I just want to make another So that's point why they're no because, longer I was just, because, uh, let's look at, just a, let's look at a, if water trickled down that, oh, sorry, Michelle. If water trickle, if those pipes did go up and come out the top, and water then trickled down that pipe, that on the outside, what would that? I don't know. Is yeah, that that could really, definitely have could some do, sort of effect for sure. That it, uh, in some old you've technology, you've got resonance that going through the electrical differential, uh, depending on the materials used. Yeah. Uh, also, that it kind uh, of explains in the pipes. 
Yeah, the, the metal pipes with the water going up, that could actually create a much larger electrical differential than just an antenna if you have that moving water going up and down that high into the atmosphere. Ah, that actually would make content. sense. Okay, thank you, Bernie. Um, oh. You're talking about that, got me thinking about something um, that looks to me like the neck ah. of a... Of a yeah. cello or yeah, i guess yeah, the big ones nice. it's a bit what's the name of the biggest one um uh, this uh, here uh, this uh, here see yeah oh a hundred percent oh god so that is resonance too like the the ends of those uh musical uh, instruments the, yeah yeah the yeah one called man none of us can think of it right i don't know i keep thinking this tuba cello, this violin, is... <laughs> cello. <laughs> oh, so this is called bass, the neck of double it. bass Double bass? Bass, bass. Let's do it. Bass neck. Thank you. Right? I, couldn't remember, I, I couldn't remember the name of the biggest one. <laughs> yeah. And no, it's not that kind of bass. Not that one. Oh, so so that guitar, double sense. put double in front of it. Put double bass. I'm looking for the biggest in the violin yeah, family. Oh, oh. <laughs> like like that. That that should be, that should be. There's there's another one called the. Uh, is it the sousaphone? S o u z a, is that right? Um, and it's literally it's it, it's the frequency it plays is so low that you can't hear it with the human ear. And this thing, you've got to stand on a ladder to play it. Like that. Um, yeah. No, system. maybe that's not it. Yeah, no, I must have the I must have the name wrong. Oh, but there is there is definitely this double bass thing. I can't remember what it's called. Anyone in chat? Anyone in chat? And, and this thing is it's uh, made of giants. It's go. made. It's oh, like literally you have to stand. Yeah, on. That's what it is. Oboe or oboe or oboe. Like, oboe. I Standing up right bass. So, so this picture here on the right um, I, um, says double bass neck with a pre-carved yep. scroll, which looks just like our Corinthian column here. It does, yeah. So I, I would so, say that's so that's a at the good... end of a musical instrument and at the end end of a column. Right. Like they're both at so the, the end of the aren't they? The violin family instruments. A hundred percent. Like that. that is. That is a very good correlation that you just made, Michelle, that they're made on the end of and musical instruments for resonance of sound resonance. And then that would explain why they have this exact same shape and architecture geometry in all of these uh, devices that we've already come to the conclusion are some sort of resonance harvesting technology. And mm -hmm. that geometry is specifically used for the same thing. And just to make a point along the mm. same lines, because I think it's all part of an interconnected system, you've got this old tower here with the same slot windows that we saw on the water towers. You know, we've got our observation deck here. We've got our Antiquitech here. And then right here, right next to it, we have the oh, same, yeah. same thing going on you know, tall, taller antenna but and here's i think a really interesting point and you know again i i think this represents a civilization that existed from ancient times until relatively modern is that these are oriented in the same direction just like the pyramids were or oriented to the to the cardinal points these are also oriented in the same direction and i would hazard to guess it's probably north south east west that is an another very very good astute yep. uh correlation you have made again i love how many dots you connect michelle been, been looking at this stuff for a long time now i need a life <laughs> i like oh, this very boring <laughs> Well, I don't know um, about you, but this okay. is the highlight. Here you go. Life. This this <laughs> massive instrument. Cool. That massive okay. instrument was, was an octobase. Um, okay. Um, 
now I've lost who who told me that. Um, thank you, whoever it was. But yeah, the octobases, and there's a few. You know, there are a few giant sized instruments around. You know, and where did these all come from? Like literally, the octobase, you can't hear it. Um, you, you can't because <laughs> the, the the frequency is too low there for our hearing. There we go. Thank see you, that? person in the audience. Look at that. That's what I was looking for. I didn't know what. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I, I knew there was a really good. big one. Yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah. Uh, Kelly. So it was Kelly, Kelly Dolan. Thank you, Kelly. All right, Kelly. Good job. Okay, so I think that definitely gives us a clue as to what the columns were doing. Mm. There's also um, those little scrolling shapes that they cut into them, that the S shapes and the shape of the actual. Uh, body, you know, with those those sort of inserts, it's it's very similar to what we see in all the, you know, on the the facading, you know, that that kind of geometry. Yeah, is this what you're talking about? The S. I mean, those two cutouts put them together. It's like a basic of Pisces almost. Mm, very interesting. Mm. So I that, want a time machine and go back for a day. And then. Oh, I know, I know. I dream of it. Oh, but then I watch and, all of And the, now we uh, have guitars, right? Right. But uh, I watch. I was the, just going to uh, say now all the guitars and the basses, they don't have the scrolls anymore. It's been taken out. Yeah, that's a good point, too. Um, but the, uh, not the astral, well, it's astral projection, but the, uh, what are they called? The When you stare at goats, um, the movie it's about the the people that can go through the oh, many stare at goats um oh. uh far seeing um remote viewing remote viewing there remote we viewing. go and all the remote viewers and yeah especially farsight michelle have you ever seen the channel farsight no is that part of the farsight institute yeah, yeah, the first thing. I, mean, I think I've, yeah, I've heard yeah. of it, but I haven't seen any of the videos. I, I'd recommend checking out some of like their um, ones on like older views that they do where they go back into time because it's like they haven't done the research we have, but what they describe in their visions truly sounds like what we're pulling up and coming oh, really? up with and like envisioning out of our own research. So it's like it gives me the hope that one day wow. when I'm uh, – Old, but much much older with gray hair and have had the time to put in and train myself astutely that i'll be able to mentally time travel myself and you know maybe maybe we'll see it in our dreams first yeah. but uh, yeah. we, we can hopefully uh consciously be able to travel there if we can't physically travel to see it <laughs> i'll trade you bernie mm, 30 years forget. I'll give you I'll 30 years. And tell him on the job. <laughs> Ed, tell if you'll him, give me 30 years back. <laughs> well, okay. I guess that's why I will get on how to make the uh, monoatomic gold, silver, plasma <laughs> water so you can start drinking it. Because honest honest to God, I oh. people say I haven't aged a day over the last eight years since I started drinking it. So I I, I do think I look. Yeah, we need to do a how to, a how to on that. Definitely need to uh, do a how to, but I'm waiting for the flux capacitor. B. How's the flux capacitor coming along, mate? Well, that 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 will be our talk <laughs> with Mike on Friday. Very cool. <laughs> I, I will shut up now and mute myself and let you continue your presentation, Michelle. Thank you. Okay. Yes, um, and I'm quickly thanks, guys. To get good back stuff. Up. Okay. So. This is the Riverside Water Tower in Chicago. And it's now an art gallery and museum. And like the Grand Avenue Water Tower in St. Louis that we just looked at, the Riverview Water Tower was said to have been built in 1871. Now there was a lot of stuff going on in 1871. <laughs> Let me tell you, busy year. Uh, what, sorry, what year was the, um, the Civil Wars? The 1861 Wars. to 1865. So literally how, only a few years after that. And then wasn't there like the Canadian-American War or something in between that it's, time? Or the Spanish uh, War? There's just wars. Just, there's, stuff, yeah, right? I mean, and, you know, God knows if they actually happened because um, 1871 
was like the year that the the U.S. corporation was formed. Um, it was, and that D.C. became its own separate thing. And you know how the U.N. is not really part of New York, and the Vatican's really not part of Rome, and the City of London's not really part of the City of London. You know they were creating these city states corporatized and turned into the three <laughs> evil you know, cities yeah. yeah so that that was going on kind of around this time um Karl Marx wrote a pamphlet about communism in 1871 uh, there was a, an uprising in Paris of the communards and that's how the name came into being um so it was kind of a time when I think the controllers were putting a lot of the pieces of their reset into place, you know, in terms yeah. of how they were going to be doing this. So 1871 was a, a key year, um, just like 1851 was a key year with things going on. And this one also has a freestanding elevator shaft in it. Right, like in this one from 1871, and again, this is what the historical record talks about. So, an elevator shaft literally like two years before the elevator was invented and before mass electricity adoption. But hey, they just decided that they were going to engineer that into a building for something that didn't even exist yet. Well, that's kind of what they like us to believe. So, again, they, they're calling it a water tower. And this one was, you know, again, so says, this is Jenny and William LeBaron Jenny was the lead architect on this. Um, again, 1871. Now, I want to compare this with the Galata Tower in Istanbul, Turkey. It looks kind of similar at night when it's all lit up. And this particular tower in Istanbul just dominates. And look the at part. that alignment with the moon. Isn't eh? that amazing? And they do that lighthouses and towers and Capitol buildings and, and mosques. And you, you showed you know, that a lot. I remember that. Right? <laughs> they line up. You know, this there is. to be something with the moon as well as the sun of them energizing, collecting resonant energy or interacting with it somehow for sure. Among other things, I mean, I think these were multi-purpose connectors, if you will, between cosmic energy and terrestrial yes. infrastructure. Okay. Is Campbell back yet? Uh, nope. I don't want to do too much without him. Especially the... I'm like, what's the, and how are they all like the exact same? Like, not just the architecture, but like the actual design, like to the mm -hmm. most custom little brick and weave and bend and curve and colors. And it, it's ridiculous. And how they claim it's made during different time periods by different cultures that had no interaction with each other yet. Exactly. And so you've got the Galata Tower in Istanbul, um, which is situated between the Bosphorus Strait and what is called the Golden Horn. It's directly across from the main part of historical Constantinople. So they changed the name from Constantinople to Istanbul. And that's part of how they have obscured the history. This was part of the historical Ottoman Empire. In the history I read about Galata, the name is said to have come from the Greek Galatai, referring to a Celtic tribe of Gauls who were said to have camped here during Hellenistic times before moving on to the Galatia region, region of central Anatolia, which was also Turkey. So why would they name a place permanently for temporary inhabitants that were only passing through? And it's described as a medieval stone watchtower and not a water tower. And then you have the, you know, definite similarity in appearance between the Galata Tower, the Riverside Water Tower, and the Prospect Park 
water tower in Minneapolis, which is also called the Witch's Hat Water Tower. And what do we have going on here? You know, the tops of these three towers look all look like witches' hats. Right. You know, if you're going to use that analogy, they all look that way. <laughs> and that's actually something too that like all of the old caps and hats look like they were actually interacting with like the atmospheric energy or some sort of energy field as well. And that uh especially like the gold crowns and the jewels and stuff like that. It, it's like a got to be an aura generating or uh, amplifying device of some sort. But it it's like that's a very good point that how so many of these tops do resemble the different types of uh, upper echelon hats or the mystic uh, cultures, hats and garbs. Right. And why... Do witches have a hat that shape in our culture? I mean, I it's not my favorite holiday. You know, sorry anybody out there that really enjoys it, but you know, I see no reason to celebrate vampires and zombies. <laughs> you know, but exactly. <laughs> I thought we'd been well, doing that for the last two years. <laughs> it's, yeah, I mean, I, I'm just saying I'm I'm not a Halloween fan. Um, but this water tower on the mm. Bright Campbell is called the Witch's Hat Water Tower. This is the Riverside Water Tower in, wow. in Illinois. It's outside of Chicago, which has the same kind of thing. And then this is in Istanbul, Turkey. This was said to have been a medieval stone mm. tower. And, wow. you know, didn't say anything about it, it being a water yeah, tower. It's the same I did a video on, on cathedrals. You know, you get some cathedrals that are 2,000 years old and they look exactly the same as a cathedral that's 100 years old. It's like, yeah, come on. But um, and it's all... interesting because it's it's the shape, isn't it, or the witch's hat? Because even those things they put on the road, they call them witch's hats. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's more talking about the shape than an actual hat that a witch wears. Right. Yeah, you're talking about the traffic cones, right? Yeah, the, yeah, the, the... yeah, yeah kind of the fluorescent orange ones or whatever color they happen to yeah. be. Yeah. Yeah. Now, another thing I find interesting is this being right next to a train station. And I looked up train stations in Istanbul and the Turkish drove me crazy. So I didn't really write any down, but there's a number of what I think are metro <laughs> stations around this this structure here so again i'm i'm like convinced there's a connection with the railroads and oh. canals and star yes. forts and these water towers um because you you Remember find the them i mean of, of the um the crystal tower uh the crystal palace it's got a tower on each end of it just like these mm -hmm. ones right and it has uh above ground railroad and below ground a train station. as well mm. Mm -hmm. exactly so and i was saying earlier wow. while you were gone campbell is as this water tower was said to have been built in 1871 the same as the corinthian column in st louis and it oh. also was said to have a electric elevator in it like the sulfur springs water tower and so 1871. So when was the Eiffel Tower? That was the first kind of elevator. Sometime wasn't in this, it? sometime in that same time period. I and I'm going to get to Eiffel Towers here in just a moment that would, because mm. I'll, I'll get there in just a moment. I'm almost there. I'm just thinking, because <laughs> mm. these have got elevators in them, but literally the elevator was what maybe five years old at the point when these were made. And they just throw on elevators in them. Right. So we're told. And again, is is are we looking at an air airship docking station? <laughs> it sure looks like they could yeah, be. But the the elevators, right? Exactly. I believe it. They've all got, you know, the landing platforms. And, and I mean that's a good point. Were these, you know, witches' hats? Were they put on top after the fact? You know, as a bit oh, of a no, I think they I were think an original a, shape. A cult symbolism. Yeah. 
I think no, it's an original, original shape. It's an energy harvesting geometry. I'm just wondering sure. where what where, where would mean, the, the, the airship dock and how, how would the people well I suppose, see, yeah, no, that would work because they have a front that comes out, you dock the front on a minute. Yeah, yeah, right. So it's cone on cone. It actually makes perfect sense yeah, to be yeah, an airship yeah. to have that which is had that, that's actually yeah. the perfect geometry for the airship to dock. There's that <laughs> famous uh docking on top of uh um the New York skyscraper or something. Um, Empire State building. or I think it or the Chrysler, Chrysler building. Yeah, yeah, the Chrysler. And I think it uh actually shows specifically how like the very tip end of the airship goes to the very top like point of the cone or whatnot and then uh by this uh the rim of the, like what you'd call the hat or whatnot the base is literally the walking platform and the, that size geometry like is the perfect fit for the airships when docking which made me think of a victrola it horn is, and i can't find <laughs> It's kind of like a witch's hat, too, bit... only in a different position. Ah. Exactly. And that's the geometry of how these cones literally are amplifying and... geometry. They resonate and create yeah, yeah. Uh, it's just... power or energy, sound energy. It's just working in reverse, right? It's fun. Well, I mean, kind of. It's getting the music and funneling it out. Right from the point where, as on a building, it's getting it from the ether and funneling it down, like into and something some rather than pulling it out through the funnel. Funneling energy up from the ground into the airship too, right? And come, it would come to that point, to the climax there of it. If it your uh, higher dipoles on the other side, and then because you always have the anode cathode reaction of one putting. Uh, ionize energy down and one putting it up so th there's endless possibilities for it to make sense and uh have applicable purposes to this airship steampunk world that must have existed <laughs> right you know and i just want to make the point that this this was yeah. all this is all well built highly integrated same template in you know different parts of the world same 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 you know, it wasn't built randomly, obviously. I mean, you don't have that mm. degree of correlation uh, randomly, <laughs> you know? Exactly. No, this, no, is, exactly. this was very well planned. And, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, the, the narrative falls apart based on that alone. So I've, this I've got one, an airship pick here. Do you want me to show it quickly? or? Sure, sure. I think that's important since we're talking about it for sure. Just quickly, I'll just quickly. Um, I, I'm, I stopped sharing. Um, oh, gosh, where's my screen on? Hang on one <laughs> There. So there we go. Can you see that? Exactly. And that that yeah, is. You a can see that the point does that? come out. And uh oh, did we lose hmm. Michelle? Uh oh, we lost Michelle. Oh, no. She'll be back. She doesn't like my pictures. Oh no. And, and I mean, look at this. This li literally just looks like the top of the towers we're looking at, or like the top of what we're told is a lighthouse. Exactly. Ooh, flying. There and we go. There's another one. Got you back. Yep. Sure looks like it to me, guys. Right? Like that, <laughs> that's the same witch oh, hat design there, right? And those all of those towers. That looks exactly like all the water towers you've been showing. It Just does. The the windows have been replaced with a little bit more filler and uh a couple things stripped off and yeah that that is the infrastructure for a south or a western world and old world based airship uh travel and just complete infrastructure really it's uh, yeah 
so yeah, there's well, a go back one. Like that, that's the reality of it. The one you have there. Oh, no, we lost it. But uh, yeah, how we're told the first balloon is just that little one with like uh, in France in like 1700 or whatnot. That's just like a little bull. And then like the little rim on it there. It was like the drawing that uh, you had up uh, second last there, Campbell. But it's just such a joke. It's like there, there's no way. Um there's Da Vinci's drawings and stuff of working what look like absolute working uh, devices that are much older than that. Yeah, and it, I mean, there's a whole story with the golden age of Zeppelins and, you know, the, the German Zeppelins figure largely in that. Yeah. You know, so... You know, again, it's, how it, many movies, it really... how many of these sort of um, steampunk type movies, they're always full of airships. Right. And, you know, again, it was part of the original civilization and it just got taken over like everything else. Chris has a very good point uh, right yeah, here. And that uh, used as a grounding rod to convert the water into the hydrogen for the airships. And that's the a simple tech that would explain exactly. the towers to and the design and everything. I think you nailed it on the head there, Chris. Mm. That's refueling stations as well, for sure. Oh, and then why would we have the elevators in the water towers? No, it's to carry your luggage up to the airship that you're done. <laughs> talking on to that that makes a lot more sense to me yeah the the, the narrative doesn't make sense oh, come on more sense than going up and looking at a water tank come on so i'm going to go ahead and share my it's screen be again because i just Absolutely. i just have a few more slides you see this i had to stop with water tower it's, and this is just a few samples um didn't have enough room for bell towers that's a whole nother one uh, oh, okay, wow. so this one is Milwaukee, and this is the North Point Water Tower, and it was said wow. to have been built between 1873 and 1874 in the style of Victorian Gothic Ooh. as part of Milwaukee's first public water works. No, I, I just one don't year. know how that can be claimed to be a water tower. <laughs> kind of looks like, like the other um, one. The bloody, I don't want to say Disney, but it looks like one of those fairy ta um, yeah, like castles it does. on the very top, doesn't it? Yeah, I was going to say Cinderella's castle from Disney. I heart fairies. Is this Cinderella, that's much better. Let's um, don't mention the D word. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry about that. You know, and again, you know, 1873, 1874, that time frame. Um, you've got this massive building right next to it. I mean, they're both massive. Yeah. You know, it could be a well. That's a, a four or five story station. building next to it. Right. Mm. So you know, again, it could be a, a docking station. It would too. make sense, especially see, especially with the train stations. You know, you can imagine that their, I mean, their system of transport was obviously a lot and their life was slower paced, right? We, we think we have to jump in planes and get, you know, across the, the plane in four hours or something. But theirs was obviously, you know, they were cruising around in airships, but airships go to train stations, right? So airships are for going across water and across countries and things. And you get to your train and that's for going across the country. And they go into cities and they have like the, the trams and the canals and things. So they had this whole integrated transport system, as far as I can see it. it, it they just had their different um, types of transport for the different lengths and where you were going, and it was all integrated by the looks of it. Free energy, <laughs> I'm sure of it. Free energy. It, it was. It was. No, you no know, again, I, I don't know the scientific terms for it, but it was like the railroads, all the rail lines above ground, below ground, streetcars. So railroads, subways, streetcars, trolley parks, so the amusement parks, they're all generating this energy 
you know, self-perpetuating yeah. machine. I mean, what helped me? <laughs> it was all going into it and coming back out again. That's all. I, I don't know how to put it. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It, it's kind of perpetual giant, motion, I guess. Like, Is that the right word? Like that. Something it's like a, that. Yeah. Like, like, giant, like a self, a self-powering system. Closed yeah, circuit, yeah, did closed you say? Circuit, yeah. yeah, and it, yep. it's a massive closed circuit, but in a, in a like the railroad connected to like the uh, the parks and the uh, racetracks and stuff. That would be your ground closed circuit, and then it would be open circuit through the uh, towers, the cathedral spires, up into the ionosphere circuit that is the natural electric field of the Earth. And that's where you're getting your power back and forth from, and that it's a massive power differential or electrical differential between the charge of these massive rail lines. Like that, that's another thing. Like trains today, half of them you see with yeah. no, nothing metal, above metal. the wire. They're electrical that just run off the natural electricity off of the actual uh, rail itself, and that's. Uh, it measures like it's a huge electrical difference uh, along those lines and um, grounding wires in power lines as well uh, can zap people and kill people, even though they're supposed to be uh, neutral, nothing in it, but it's a massive uh, electrical potential in that iron, in the copper, that just the cable itself mm. over that huge difference. And then so it, those would be your closed systems with your resistant workloads in it on the macro scale, and that it then connected up and charged through the ionosphere. Sounds good to me. Mm. And it's a good, <laughs> I just know it's all it's connected. It's a very good point that all trains are, are metal. <laughs> like, has anyone ever seen a wooden train? Ever seen a train with wooden wheels? Ever, ever seen, like, you, 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 it's... We see everything, right? You go back in time and everything starts off as wood, except for, except for trains and trams. Yeah. Because and clearly they rubber, would not yeah, work yeah. unless it was metal on metal. That's a really good Sorry, point. What was that? All train wheels are only metal, and that would be to pick up the electrical difference. You'd think they might put rubber on it to mm. uh, make it more secure, to not wear out as fast and all of that. But no, no. that You get you a breaking, it. yeah. So I'm just mm, going to point out break the circuit and, and similar um, things with tips. Oh, sorry, Michelle. It's okay. They used to be called Looks traction. Like it's started on that though, or you won't get through this. <laughs> they, um, I'm close to the end. So they used to be called traction companies. No, no, you're doing well. I would. So traction. I want to point out. Yeah. Trains. Oh, really? So I just want to point that out because traction when I look at the track. older, when I look at the train older uh, trolley systems and train systems, a lot of times they were part of a, a traction company, and and that probably plays in there somehow. Hmm, that's clearly why they called train tracks. You know the H Houghton County Traction Company. Traction. And you know, so this is before traction, they started. Which is very, very similar. Very similar to tractor, right? And a tractor is very similar to a train. So they were. This is before they started taking them out. <laughs> this is when they were everywhere. So this is the Houghton County Traction Company is on Lake Superior. Uh, you know small peninsula that's part of the state of Michigan and there's there's no trains there now <laughs> no traction company there now but I bring that up because you can see with this short line Iowa traction railway between Mason City Iowa and Clear Lake Iowa it's like a, um, I think 10 mile or 6.2 kilometer or something like that it's still run the old way so, you, you know, you've got the electricity on the outside like that. Like the cable, these, that's okay, like a touch cable, right? like, um, like the trams. The, the okay. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I love how electrical trains mm. are the quote unquote old way and how <laughs> everybody thinks electrical vehicles <laughs> are this new technology. And it's like, no, no, we've just been suppressed of this technology for the last hundred years. And it was around long before yeah. our time. Right. Yeah. So, you know, so that's, yeah. that's an so example we've all of seen something that photo that's... Of 1900 with all the cars charging. Have you seen that one? All the old vintage cars and they're literally all hooked up to their chargers. I haven't seen that one. That's a good one. Yeah. To look for it. I'll stop so, interrupting. I'll, I'll just no, you're my fine. Mute button. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, you're fine. Um, it's... <laughs> The back and forth is good. So, since you're the word guy, Campbell, you might kind of put that in your on your list traction <laughs> for these early street car traction, companies. Traction, definitely traction, tractor, track. Yep. I think there's something there. So this there's is definitely. More... I, I've always thought about you know this. The steam, the big steam engines. I don't. There's no way that they were built to, to just to, to burn wood, especially when you look into how many of them actually exploded. Like when they were doing this back in the early 1900s and that 1800s, half of the trains blew up, like literally, and they were ripping apart the metal on these trains. They just blew them to smithereens. Um, and inside a lot of them, they're full of um, like metal rods all these metal rods in, in the big front um, combustor bit. So there's something else going on there. What it sounds like to me is, is like with the early street cars, like starting around the 1850s, they had to use mules and horses to pull them. And I, I think they were using whatever means oh, they okay. had of, 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 you know, providing the fuel for these things until they could get the electricity up again. <laughs> And so, you know, you yeah, went from the I horses agree. pulling the, the trolleys to the electrification of the streetcars. And then within 30 years, most of them were gone. Um, so probably the same thing with the trains. They, they had to no, use coal no. and wood until they could get the electricity going. Um, it's mm. a recurring theme yeah. when I look at these places. Right, and it fits in with the first photos of like the Trans-Siberian Railway being dug up, not not built, but literally dug up, and most likely the same case with mm. all of North America. And it just like any common sense when you see the photos of these trams in cities being pulled by horses on these rail lines that already exist, and it's like. Oh, Nobody would build things back when <laughs> yeah. the rail first, put the cars first, and then um, have to have horses pulling them. No, they had they were working electrically <laughs> beforehand. Yeah. Something happened that changed the the power source to no longer be there. The reset happened, and they were just left over and being reused, and thus why they were hidden away and trashed. And especially that one town in the middle of the Amazon jungle that had the <laughs> identical trolleys and yeah. train lines. And that, that one right there, I think, just is the biggest narrative destroyer. Manaus. Yep. Manaus Look up yeah. trolleys in Manaus, Manaus, and they were there yeah. the turn of the century, and it's in the middle of the Amazon rainforest. One other example of that are canals yep. as well. Early, early canal boats were pulled by mules too yeah. And yeah. every indication yeah, is yeah, the yeah. canals were electrified as well uh, i've seen that right that also makes like what you're saying makes know. perfect sense but not what the image is of like okay they have these horses pulling these ships through these canals yet like no it, like it, they're added on like the horse you can see that it's like so awkward and wasn't meant to be there and the canal was not designed to have a horse pulling the ship whatsoever and like yeah. you needed something more well, massive to have made those canals than these horses to begin with you know like mm. 
but, well, look, but that's look what at the bridges taught. in the canals. Every time you come up to a bridge, you have to unhook from the horse, take the horse around the other side of the bridge, get under the bridge, and then hook back up again. And what, they're going to build this massive system and not even have a little place for the horses to walk? Come on. Right? right? Like, just, it was not engineered for that. It's completely backwards. Right. No. Exactly. Yep. Details, details. And what I call the John Wayne version of history. <laughs> You know, because that's what you find in, you know, museums, Unwind. you know, they, they give the history His name of was Merrill. <laughs> yeah. I, I can't think of his original name, but yeah, something like that. Um, Mer Merrill something. Yeah. Not, not yeah. a very masculine name. That's for sure. Not a very, not a very masculine name. Um, so, yeah. So when they gave us a fake history, which they're still telling us, you know, every canal museum you go to is going to have the <laughs> the old way. It's it's ridiculous. So yeah. anyway, but they um, don't even they won't even touch the man made edges. I mean, you can't even find anything on that. They just ignore it. Oh no, what are you talking about? It's just naturally formed brick edges. Come on, <laughs> like there's exactly. no narrative at all for that. Nope, not a good one. Anyway. So this slide is showing the Warbreck Water Tower in Blackpool, England, and it was said to have been built in 1932 to serve the heavily residential areas of central Blackpool and high-rise homes. And it's located on Lays Road, L-E-Y-S, right here. The Warbreck Reservoir Lays. Water Tower, Lays. L-E, did Big, you say? L-E-Y, uh -huh. yeah, like, -E like Ley Line? Like mm. ley line. Yeah. Nice of them to tell us. Nice. They it do that occasionally. Look very tall. Is that a big one or it looks a bit squat, that one, doesn't it's, it? It's probably squat, but I mean, just look at the solid construction, you know, the, the older stone work, the columns, you know, mm. again, they were building something like that in That's 1932 <laughs> in, in between yeah. World War One and World War Two in, in Great Britain. Yeah. So yeah. that's another one. And then the Blackpool Tower kind of leads to the Blackpool or the, the water tower kind of leads to the Blackpool Tower. And it was said to have been inspired by the Eiffel Tower and that at the time it was open to the public in 1894, it was the tallest man-made structure in the British Empire. Okay, so you've got you know, this nice architecture down here, there's there's quite a nice theater in there. I think it got damaged by fire, but they managed to repair it. Um, but the new Brighton Tower um, on Merseyside mm. in the Wirral Wir 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 Peninsula was said to have been built between 1898 and 1900, but it was demolished in 1919 and its metal was sold for scrap. And then this building here at the base of the tower, that building was destroyed by a fire, dear, dear, um, in 1969, the Tower Ballroom. And the Beatles performed there, it's quite well known, you know, this beautiful structure at the base of this, you know, massive tower based on the and Eiffel Tower, on top right? Of it. The towers are on top of these, That's on top these of buildings. And so, and is the narrative that the that the building was there, and then they put the tower on? I don't know. Um, it just talks about the tower. I'm not sure. So, so this one was said to have been mm. the tower was said to have been built yeah. in Blackpool in 1894, inspired by the Eiffel Tower. So that's in England, correct? Right, that's in England. I'll show you another in map England. here in just a moment. For what purpose? And then. Do they say um, why? Landmark, just, no doubt. <laughs> no reason. To you commemorate know, Tartaria. Just to course. try and piss off the French. <laughs> <laughs> so they had the same thing going on here in New Brighton. And if you look on a map, they're really not that far from each other. <laughs> As a matter of fact, in a yeah. line of sight, they're, I was, they're lined I like up that. pretty well. 
that similar constructed coastline yeah. that definitely like that that's one i guarantee michelle if you went into here you probably already have in past works and show that that whole coastline is uh definitely uh engineered and artificially uh structured it, right and and that, again that coastline is the three, world over yeah Hmm. A lot of these are in line of sight view. So like when you were showing the pictures before and they had other towers in the background, like do we think they were transferring energy from tower to tower? Is that why they're line of sight and when, within a certain distance they're literally wi fi stuff to each other? It most, most likely was the case. And, um, yeah, especially the um, smaller uh frequency smaller band waves would need have needed to be in line of sight but uh it, it was probably just them pulsing the ionosphere and being able to harvest the electricity back down or if there's two that close that were within line of sight one might have been the anode one might have been the cathode where one's taking energy yeah. from the ionosphere and one was putting energy back up from the grounding itself and then there might have been like a uh, connecting grounding cable underneath the ground that connected both of them and or a uh, processing uh, like transistor station in between them that would be my best guess because anything else does not make sense and uh michelle have you seen all of the um the blueprint drawings of these sort of tower likes like um the one specifically uh london city supposedly had a uh, competition mm -hmm. to design right. them and whatnot I saw that. Mm -hmm. well, most never built them, it most of them look like pictures rather than renderings and stuff like that and that why would they put so much effort into designing these and having these in that time frame unless they had some sort of applicable uh, use case function, right? I think the one you're talking about was at Wembley mm. Stadium. It was supposed to be at Wembley Stadium, if I remember. Yeah, but then it's like in Japan, they have one built from the same time frame. Germany, I believe there's a couple. Uh, Russia, there's former Soviet I, Union, there's several of them, I think. But keep in mind, that's what they tell us. It, exactly. Right? <laughs> that's what they tell us, yeah. that, that, that we built this. We built this yeah. recently. And, you know, I, I, I just want to point out, so the new Brighton Tower is gone. And the black pool is still standing. The new Brighton Tower was destroyed in uh, within 19 years of its being built. It's what we're told. It was built between 1898 and 1900 and demolished in 1919. It's when the tower, the tower part of this was demolished, and then the the rest of it went up in fire in 1969 so the ballroom and everything so they built a landmark uh architectural building that would be a tourist attraction and then decided to tear it down only 10 15 years after they built it is what you're it's, saying that's kind of what kind of what the narrative says the other interesting thing i want to point out is if you look at this picture here look at the age and gender of the people in the picture yeah, That's right. And you know, where where are the adults? Where are the girls for that matter? Mm. You know, they're all young boys. And showing off a lot of leg for that <laughs> time frame, too. Exactly. These <laughs> these two guys, these two guys here, especially England. <laughs> you know, so that kind of speaks to the whole orphan thing Big to me. Time. And so, like, look at the, the yeah. two capacitor sides on, on the right side picture there that just look like uh, your standard cathedral harvesting uh, Antiquitech. Exactly. Yeah, just and then the tower in the middle. I'm, I'm wondering if this is a title T-I-D-A-L thing going on here because you've got all the water here. Good point. But, but 
not here. Like they're out in the middle of the canal. <laughs> yes. You see the you kind of see the masonry there. Oh, and look at those boats. They look like they have the wire styled masts, not like uh not a, a wind blown, but what uh, like Philip Drew is in and whatnot show a lot of pictures of um, compared more of like an atmospheric style powering as opposed mm. to uh, wind sail power. Not made for sails, yeah. Mm. And uh, I, I would much more believe the narrative if they said these towers were water towers. <laughs> Right. I hear that. It's, yeah, exactly. you know, definitely suspicious stuff. So the last thing I just want to talk about, I'm I'm done with the PowerPoint that I had put together. Yeah, the bell towers would have been too much. <laughs> um, I just want to point <laughs> out, uh, actually, I'm going to share it one more time. Okay, so I just wanted to point out on the Eiffel Tower replicas. Oh, yeah. Okay, so that was said to have been completed in 1889, and the inspiration for the creation of over, over 50 similar towers around the world. Most are not exact replicas, but there are many that resemble it closely, while others look slightly different. And... In 1889, that's, that's later than I thought. So Watkins because Tower... A, elevators were invented before then, weren't they? But but the Eiffel Tower was where um, he proved that they were safe, basically. He, put up, he, he wrote it and, and wrote it down with a safety break. I, I, and so that those towers we saw before, that was before that. And they had elevators. The water towers... The water tower, the 1871 well, one. Seaman, wasn't it? Seaman's. The, the Riverside. Seaman's elevators, yeah, right. Wow. Yeah. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say I doubt the stories that we've been told about the construction of the Eiffel Tower and the rest of these towers. I mean, I, I, think, I think it was all they are already, and these are the stories that were told. But this is the one you were talking about, Bernie, is Watkins Tower at Wembley. It was said to have never been completed. It was began in 1891 and demolished in 1907. And that what? would have been the tallest one. What? So, sorry, so they that started, one or not built? They, they built it for 16 years and then went yeah. too hard and knocked it over. <laughs> what? Oh, wow. No, so that, that one's actually a new one to me. The one I was talking about was for the actual city of London that they had a competition and they have all these insane, like, so complex, like, exponentially more antiquitechy looking ones uh, that look, they're supposedly renders, but they actually, most of them look like real photos. Um, I think it was John Levi that originally, a couple years ago, did uh, one episode on it that I saw the first ones. But I went on to, um, uh, what is it, the one of the sites but uh literally 35 different ones popped up and it, it's just mind-blowing the different styles and designs and every single one just has the most advanced antiquitech i've ever seen on it and it was from a competition uh in the late or early 1800s i believe yeah and this one was from a competition supposed to have been from a competition starting in 1890 but that one was built, you said. Well, it looks like it was built. It says uh, construction started 1891, completed uh, in 1894, built. opened yeah. in 1896, and demolished in 1907. Totally you know, makes with, sense. You just demolished <laughs> your own works, right? You know, and then they, you know, I'm sorry. I think they could Photoshop. <laughs> yeah. I really do. That, I think exactly. they could Photoshop. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's some very dodgy pictures um, from the, is it the, the French World Fair? Um, is it, I can't remember, the, is it 91, something like that, 1891? Um, and you see all these funny pictures of the Eiffel Tower. It's, and then we've got the pictures of the Eiffel Tower when 
up the very top of it, it's got like a big landing deck on it. Have you seen that one? I, I think that's, I've seen that's gone now. That. Ooh, so that mm. right. I've even seen right one with a train or something going through it. I have not I don't seen know that. If it was real. <laughs> Who knows so what's that real though, right? One, yeah. The middle one there with the ball. That's uh that design right yeah. there <laughs> on most of the ships like pre-1800 that uh supposedly yeah. the ball lit up. And um, also in, uh, uh, where is it, uh, Crimea, uh, the big port there, the first pictures of uh, it before the uh, war uh, and it uh, before it got destroyed, there was those sort of towers with those balls and the wires coming down all over Crimea. And it, there was never any sort of explanation for what it was and the drawings per er, uh looked like it was emitting light out of those globes so that is fascinating and i bring this mm. up because it looks I'm, a lot like I'm, that other tower is it with the ball is it uh, what is it in Washington State or Seattle or somewhere? There's some yep. big town like that. Yeah, there's yeah, Space know, Needles, and that's that's another one I've got pulled up here. Um, my point is that all of these Eiffel Tower inspired towers, I think, are just you know the explanation given for this pre existing infrastructure. Um, and the same thing is true of the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> There's supposed to be hundreds of replicas of the Statue of Liberty around the world. You know, you know, Austria, Which Denmark, mad. Germany, Ireland, Kosovo, Netherlands, Norway, Spain, it's, Ukraine, it's, United it's Kingdom, Canada, Mexico, of the USA. <laughs> South America, right. Argentina, well, Brazil, Ecuador, Peru, Asia. In Malaysia, India, Singapore, China, and, and Israel, half of Japan, and Pakistan. And Pakistan. And it's like half of those replicas <laughs> were made before the Statue of Liberty, too, I'm guessing, right? Like <laughs> Australia. <laughs> A pre, pre, pre In Adelaide. Oh, we got one, too. Yes. We have a 30-foot one. Replica. Oh, my gosh. At a shopping complex. <clears throat> um. I'm just giving that as those. So, two I mean, examples. obviously, the Statue of Liberty is, is ISIS, right? Yeah, it's something other than a representation of something other than what we're told, which is the replica what of the one told, in New York. Yeah. So, um, could be the mm. you know, you know, feminine energy goddess kind of thing. Um, yeah, but I don't it, think it's the torch, I don't think right? it's at all what we're told. The, 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 no, well, the torch is, you know, there's a lot of, um, you know, old sort of stories. Of religion. They always talk about the flame and keeping the flame alight and the eternal flame and you know, all this kind of stuff. That's what I see that torch as. It's like the keeping the eternal flame lit, which goes back to the whole Frisian story and Aurea Linda and all that kind of stuff. It's you know, always talking about this eternal flame, which is us, I guess, when you get down on it. Yeah, exactly. And then the last thing is the space needle, which is what you were talking about. That one. Um, yeah. So you've got the one it, in yep. Seattle, that's the most famous, but then you've got the one in China, you know, China and Calgary in your neck of the woods. Yeah. And of course, in um, you know. in Men in Black, the movie, um, that one in Seattle turned into a, a spaceship and flew away. <laughs> it was actually the story was it's just a dog for a spaceship. In, in the movie, down, so could they be telling us something? And I think they're telling us something without telling. They're exactly. telling us hidden in plain mm. sight, and. Uh, it's a good point. I'm glad you brought up these uh, supposed space needle towers in that the only rational reason with now what we know is for them to still be building this style of architecture that's essentially useless, like 
to put that much energy into like the tower where you just have a couple of floors at the very top would be that it has some sort of uh, still used energy harvesting or broadcasting um, application or technology applied in it. And that uh, these all how our cities are these macro processing chips and circuits with all the work that you've uh, done in showing that, Michelle, as well as uh, you too, Campbell, and uh, originally um, uh, Michael Tellinger uh, showing the ancient ones being macro city boards, is that whatever power structure or interference that's happened on this planet, uh, they they've been in control or some group is still utilizing and has knowledge of this higher energy um, technology and usage and are still to, in today's world, applying it, using it, building it and hiding it from the masses. And hiding it from us. Mm. So this one, yeah. this one, yeah. let me see. Okay, sure. I think it must be this one. I'm trying to figure out which one it is. What I'm looking at, okay, I guess this is this is that the Skylon Tower. I'm I'm looking at this one right here. I mean, look at the size of that thing. And I'm not sure if that's how the old Hill that Road one? Tower. Seventy one, they say. If that if that's the one in Johannesburg, I'm not sure if that's right. Yeah, I, I think. Oh, in uh, South Africa. Yeah. Could be. Yeah, because that one doesn't look familiar to me. And okay. I've seen the one that's like in Germany. Let, that me, is, let me go oh, back. Is it Sydney, Connor? Yeah, there's one in Sydney. Because I think that's there's one in, in Sydney too called the Centerpoint Tower. That looks similar to that. I think it's here find it sorry about that guys got all kinds of advertising on this one so, okay so you know and this is this the thing about the last one when they go into cities they they yep. always open up you know new bit right they have their new the new divisions so you can imagine if you go in and find a city it's not that hard to keep all this stuff hidden especially if the city's you know overgrown and that you just clean up a bit and that's your house and then you clean up another section and that's your new housing division. Now people can go there and live. And all the other stuff that's there that they're cleaning up and that no one goes there or knows about it. So, you know, all these towers that were built in the 50s, 60s, even 70s, like they could have been there. We just, you know, they're just in areas where people didn't go. And if they really don't want you to go there, oh, well, it's just a government base. Sorry. <laughs> it's an army base. You know, it's not, it's not a hard thing to do. Like I think it's, that it's a hard thing to keep this stuff hidden, but it's really not. It's really not. Look around today. People, I mean, look around that. today, right? Don't go out of your house. Okay. <laughs> right. We've all been living essentially for two years now in, uh, um, under martial law and a full out police states everywhere with everyone essentially sacrificing, <clears throat> giving up all of our rights and freedoms and nobody at all except for maybe one percent of us and 99 percent of the people probably watching this and in our stream being that one percent that uh, are resisting saying something about it and trying to oppose it but it, it's like five years ago if you talk to the average person and suggested that we'd be living in this sort of dystopian reality, they would just laugh at you and be like, oh, I would fight to the death and not let that happen. And yet here they are uh, succumbing to uh, the jab and everything else, which is just insanity. But uh, yeah, um, it, it's... It, it, I would... I would venture to say that the percentage is how higher. Easy it is to do. <laughs> yes, that, that is true. Uh, I think the percentage of people higher. that that see what's going on now, especially, and I think that's one of the reasons it's being allowed to play out this way, is to wake people up. Wake up. <laughs> they don't want us to yeah. know any of wake this. Up. And I'm oh. sure you're right, Bernie. I, I'm sure they're using that, all of that energy and all that tech, what they have left of it, they're using. 
exactly and, and using against us <laughs> right could be what's uh powering this supposed pr prison planet that uh the the shell around us that uh doesn't let us out and traps us wow. but we but 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 here's the thing and it's really important to understand this <laughs> everything they're doing is completely criminal and illegal <laughs> It's against exactly. it's against universal law. They can't do what they've done without our consent. We they've gotten our consent by lying to us. Exactly. So, and and, it, and once we know the game, you know, once people start waking up and withdrawing their consent, I know it's crazy right now, but they know that. That's why they work so hard to keep us asleep. Exactly, and. <laughs> It's about resisting and not be never being violent, never giving in to their way, never harming your fellow humans with it, but being vocal, showing the evidence, not giving in to the narrative, and not letting those that are, um, I guess, uh, ingrained in the matrix to affect your own understanding and your own reality and that you don't have to like fight with these people you don't have to try to convince them otherwise but just don't give in to the peer pressure and that those that are waking up encourage them and share the knowledge share the facts share the evidence with them and let them discover the truth and you're absolutely right michelle that it's definitely more like at least 50 if not 60 percent of the overall population that's really starting maybe even 70 or higher that are really starting to question wtf what sort of world are we living in but it's that the the TV, the radio, the media, and then also the social media censorship from the major platforms and the algorithm shadow banning everyone's uh, dissent in it makes it seem like it's everyone that is pro for this and that is supporting this and whatnot, when in fact it's probably now a smaller percentage than ever that are clinging to power and why they are using such extreme measures because they know they're at the very end. They know that what they're doing is not just against universal and natural law, but is actually against human rights and criminal law on so many levels as well. And uh, I believe, um, I was talking to a friend right before this that there was a case in Canadian court that just ruled against uh, one of the COVID tickets or something, but it was like on the federal level. So it was a uh, precedent setting case and that they're talking about how now if like everybody or just like one in 10 people start uh, fighting these tickets, fighting these things and taking it to their local legal ability of fighting back under the system's way that the whole charade is going to collapse and fall apart in no time at all because it has no legal basis it has no mass support and it's absolutely idiotic in my heart i cannot believe it's, they're going to get yeah. away with this i cannot believe that like they're not. That something is going to happen and they're we're not. part i mean all everybody everybody who's waking up is part of that change we're that we want to see exactly but i just i just can't even imagine them yeah, getting away with this it makes me think of yep they, they won't they've already lost you see because time doesn't exist so if we lost we wouldn't be here <laughs> that's the first point that's right good point. um good point. because it, we, we, we just wouldn't be here so um, yeah, look at it that way. Um, and now I forgot what my other point was. Right. Um, but, it, but it was good. It was good. So I think that. <laughs> right. And the, but, the I mean, sketch is it, it is poorly. I was going to say, yeah, but Biden. Look, look at um, American, the American um, football, college football. Have you seen what's going on there? I mean, if people seriously think that we're the, mon the minority, then what they're doing is they're not watching any alternative social media and and they're only watching the media but if you turn off if you turn off the mainstream media and you and you don't watch it and all you watch is alternative social media well guess what suddenly we're a hundred percent 
It's all our interpretation, and that's what they're playing with is how we see it. They, they're they saying, no, no. Like in Australia, every day, like every hour, every single news bulletin on the radio, oh, Australia's hit 70%. We're going for 80 And I'm thinking, come on, you're lucky if you've got 20%. But they say this because, um, you know, everyone wants to be part, you know, no one wants to be different. Everyone wants to be part of the crowd, right? So they, they say, well, the majority are doing this, and they think that'll make us think, oh, I better jump in and be part of the majority. Um, but clearly, it's just, it's it's a lie. And, and I mean, the thing is, they keep saying, trust the science, trust the science. And all these people run around going, why don't you trust the science? And I'm like, well, I, I, I do. I listen to the scientists. Real I don't science. listen to politicians yeah. and news readers because clearly they're not scientists. So I am trusting the science. What are you talking about? You know, and if they've so, and lied there's even to stories us- coming out now that the Dr. Fauci isn't even a real doctor. Have you heard this? It wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> I think there's a lot more down that rabbit hole than that. <laughs> <laughs> the whole a lot more. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, if they've lied to us all, this much already about the kinds of things we've talked about tonight, what else have they lied to us about? They're lying to us to this day. Exactly. They don't want to lose power. The criminals are in control, you know, have been, you know, gotten themselves in office forever. They make the laws to keep them protected and to hold us accountable when it should be the other way around. Mm. <laughs> you know, Absolutely. so. Yeah. And it's just lie upon lie. They can't keep it together because. They, they don't even know the truth anymore. They're, they're such liars and everything they do is such a lie. And that's all they talk about and all they do that they don't even know what the truth is anymore. They just build lies upon lies and then they try more lies to fix up their old lies. And we see what's happening, right? All they're doing is running yeah, faster right. down that tunnel to implosion. But they think right. but that's their only option. They've got nothing else they can do. Right. But they have to keep telling lies. And of course. <laughs> they have to. And... They do. You know, and the other good the thing is, you know, in, in all evil, all evil contains the seeds of its own destruction. It does. All evil has to kill itself. So so there's that as well. It has to implode. This is the, um, what they, um, oh God, what's called? entropy. This is the whole entropy thing that they try and tell us, right? Everything eventually goes to entropy. But that's completely the opposite. That's where they're going, but but we're not. It's because they're killing themselves. They have to because they've got no light in them. Right. You know, so it's, it's a confusing time, but it's also a time where more light is coming in and people are waking up. The phoenix and, shall rise. And, you know, there's... There's good happening every day too. So, exactly. Uh, Focus on the world you want to create. (laughs) That's exactly. Exactly. You know, the past is gone. Don't don't dwell on Mm. negativity. You you can't. No, can't change it. You know, if it keeps coming up, go in there and go into yourself and think about it. You know, what's here? Do I feel bad about this? Does this make me feel a bit shameful that I acted this way? Does this make me... And go through it. Look at it with different eyes and you'll you'll understand. Oh, well, I'm just a person. People make mistakes. I was just a kid. I was just this, whatever. But if you can do that and get it out of you, you know, just um, peace with it, drop it, then you can go forward without all this baggage because... You can't change the past. You can just change your view of it and your perspective. And if you change that, then you change how it affects you or how much it affects you or doesn't. And how to build your future. Make peace with the past so you can control the present to build your better future. And it's funny, like here in Calgary... They've made it where we I can't even go into a bar or even my girlfriend's work without presenting a COVID passport. And like I, I walked into my local pub last night 
uh, to meet a friend and like tried using his uh, passport thing and they caught on right away. They're like, oh, you got to get out of here. And I looked around and it was like just us in there. So it was like, okay, enjoy my one friend's freaking one beer in your empty restaurant because, you know, this is totally going to last, guys. Like just, just face palm. Yeah. Yeah. And that's something that we're working on too is um with a few other people i'm working on a directory we're going to get launched so we're going to actually you know promote these businesses and let you know where they are these businesses who are saying yep come and come and trade here we, you know we're not going to to, to discriminate because ultimately that's what we need to do we need to say you don't want us fair enough great we'll, we'll stand by and watch your business collapse and crumble and anyone who wants to do business will go and support them and that's another way that we that we help you know the system and all all of these massive corporations to collapse and we put the power back in the hands of the people the small business um because that's what yeah, we've got to exactly. do you know watch where your money goes and who you're funding vote with your dollars that that is like the only true uh democracy left in the west is voting with your dollars where you spend it and make sure that you don't give it to the corporations and the banks that have been oppressing and stealing forever. Put it into the new financial system, the cryptos, put it into your local farmer's markets, put it into your local independent businesses and those that say, hey, my business, I choose to deal with people, not with some fascist system that's imposing uh, extremely uh, anti-human rights laws and oppression and even state violence, which is absolutely insane. And make sure to stay peaceful, but also to... Uh, I love seeing what you're doing, Campbell, there with the meetups and all the movements of the protests because it is a rising tide and it is growing inertia that it's coming to a figurehead and that there's only so much uh lies that they can keep pressing because apparently also in uh bc now next to alberta uh where i'm at uh, uh, all of the nurses and doctors are supposedly suppo uh debating going on strike because they just can't handle not the overwhelming amounts of COVID, but in fact, the uh, ridiculous amounts of people that are getting sick after they take the jab. And even with all of that, the they're just so fed up from seeing the lies on TV saying that they're being overwhelmed and yet the hospitals are emptier than they've ever been. And it's like, I went to a hospital two weeks ago in Calgary and it was like, I've never had faster service there. Like never in my life, just because it was so empty. And then it's like, I turn on the TV for one minute and it was like, uh, the Canadian military is sending in doctors for Alberta to help the overwhelmed system. And it's like overwhelmed because they're going on strike. Like what, what, what is happening? Like, yeah. it's just such a shrink. It was just like last year when it was so overwhelmed, you know, it was so overwhelmed that, you know, the nurses just had to dance. They just had to dance to get rid of all that stress. You know, so there's a, a lot of things that I like to highlight, but I think the biggest one is that there was a highly sophisticated advanced civilization here. That's where we came from. It's not the story that we're told. And no. we're powerful, united. And, you know, that's another reason they have worked so hard to keep us separate and divided as they know that <laughs> they know they can't touch us if we know what's going on <laughs> exactly the power is in if the we if if we unite and yeah. they may have it's happening and yeah um, Perth forces, made up, guys. <laughs> awesome yeah um they try. It's all intimidation, though, all their big weapons and that, and it's just all to make us scared. But, yes, yeah, definitely um, groups, guys. Perth meeting, uh, meet up 16th of October. I've put some um, 
flies around in social media. So come and check us out. And anyone anywhere else, um, I know Kel's trying to get one sorted in Melbourne, but if anyone's, you know, wherever you are, um, of course, you know, I can't do it all myself. So I need, you know, but for, we're still trying to get together like a Discord where we can have um, chats for each individual city. So literally people can go and say, well, I'm from this city. Let's let's start one because that's the other thing, you know, powerful, you know, we need to strengthen numbers, get out there, start living our lives again. Um, you know, don't take any of this crap. If police come up and tell you you can't do something, ask them why. Ask them to prove their point because they can't. It's just intimidation and, you know, stand up for your rights. Enough of this bending over crap. <laughs> Be peaceful but strong. Right. Yeah. It's always Sorry. great, always right, great to Bernie be with going? you guys. He He's back. Yes. I was trying to find Thank you shirt again, Michelle. Must Hang be getting on. right there. It is. <laughs> let's anti disestablishment. Let's, let's see. Here. I'm. Oh, I love the word. It's um almost eleven here in this <laughs> specific time. So it's it is late. It's cool. two o'clock in the morning Eastern time. But um. Oh. There we go. Hit me up again in oh, a couple of weeks, and I'll get to some like bell towers because I'm that got some neat stuff to share with that. Definitely, absolutely. Cool. Get on the uh, bells. I'm trying trying to get uh, Paul on with us as well because cool. uh, we've just seemed to keep missing old yes. Paul. But he, uh, Mr. Cook, does say he really wants yeah. to uh, come back on, so <laughs> we will. I have that. got his um, his WhatsApp, so I I can contact him. He said he's I think he said he's not that good on email, but I don't I don't even have WhatsApp, so but we'll get Paul on. Paul, contact us, yeah, send us an email. WhatsApp wasn't even working today, so yeah, along with Facebook and Instagram. <laughs> and, and Instagram, I know, right? I was going to mention that, like what what hats. Like there's been so much talk and like we've, you know, Bernie mentioned the cases going through. There's cases in Australia. I know there's stuff in the US. And then uh, all this talk about something's happening, October, right? Red October, we're in October. And then Facebook goes down for how long? Seven hours? That's never happened, ever. Right. Since it, since it has been launched, ever. So what was that about? They're just saying, oh, it's just a that wasn't just a glitch. Someone went in there and started doing stuff. So, you know, we don't yeah, know I'm what's sure going on under the will, surface either. Yeah, That's the other thing. The it, it will all come out. And <laughs> we, will, we will have to, exactly. um, maybe for the next one, we'll set it up where we can do the second half on Odyssey or something like that. So uh, we don't have exactly, to. Exactly. Yeah, we can get into it a bit more. Well. Yep. Don't have to hold our tongues. <laughs> yeah. And then that way know, we you, can you, have you a bit more to... talk back as well. And, and... <laughs> yeah. You Sorry? get to a certain point where it's like it's not possible to not say anything. <laughs> right. you no, know, it's all BS, you know. It's about yeah. control. It's not about it's your crap, health. Is it? <laughs> and it's getting it's yeah. getting more and more obvious. No. So <laughs> we'll... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we'll definitely do that. Um we've got accounts, so we'll so we can jump across to like Odyssey, Rumble, um, I think are the best two. And that way we can just say what we want. Exactly. and Which is what we we'll need to do because we speak to the universe, right? Like everything we do, yeah. intention, the way we, we speak, we put our frequency into the universe. That's what they're stopping us doing with all this censorship. Literally, they're stopping us telling the universe what we want. Um, which so we definitely need to do that because it reminds me at this point in history. Um, just quickly, just one more minute, Michelle. Um, in the Bible, before the flood, right? It says that all the people on earth were yelling and screaming and making so much noise that God had to come down and sort it out. Um, and that's kind of what it feels like at the moment. Hopefully, He won't be bringing a flood this time, but we've got to make noise, you know, we've got to speak to the universe, right? And then it will give us what we need or God. Or whatever you want to call it. So there you go. And, and Campbell, I'm going to forward you an email that one of my viewers sent me, and it's more down your line than mine. Um, 
it looks really interesting, but I'm it's I'm not really into the the word connections and yeah, yeah, there's yeah, a lot yeah. of really good suggestions. So oh, cool. I'm gonna forward that to you to take a look at. Definitely. Oh, I remember it. Cool. Thank uh, you. I've actually uh, got a video I'm supposed to be mean to make called Words Are Cool. And it's literally just a list of words I've got to read. But anyway, I'll be quiet. <laughs> Uh, we will. We have to do an episode coming up, uh, maybe two from now, where we go over specifically the coastlines and the coastlines of Alaska and of Siberia, the old Tartaria, and compare to some ancient maps in particular, because I believe that is a subject that uh, pretty much gives undeniable in-your-face evidence of the narrative is bullshit, people. And Paul will be a good one for that. So it is. Absolutely. Good call. Definitely. We will set that up. Yep. There yeah. We go. I mean, it, I mean it's every clear narrative that... has a narrator. <laughs> oh. Yeah. And I was just going to say it's clear that coastlines are, are shaped, and that's right? all over the world. Clearly. So, harbors yeah if you study it for any length of time it's you get the same shape appearance all over so. and block work and engineered like structures and uh, exactly it, it it will be an episode to look forward to because there's so much out there it's it's insane that well, it's, it's not insane that people still believe the old narrative. It's just they haven't been exposed to the facts. And that's why it, it is so important with what we are doing here and what this entire community is doing. And I, I love your uh, site, Michelle, for anybody that doesn't know, it's piercingtheveilofillusion.com where all of her work is yep. put into... Uh, laid out blog work and documented so you can watch it in video and then reference the actual facts that are meticulously listed and categorized and documented by our good friend Michelle. Like I said, I need a life. Yeah, is below. <laughs> I, do, I do this all the time, so I like oh well, that's okay though, because <laughs> perfect time to have this nerd out session live is because it's you know the now the, the history books taught in school might be like this chapter written by michelle gibson you know like here's well, i mean I, li I literally can't get i can't i cannot get it out fast enough you know because it's just tell me about it you know it's it's too much time, i've got to stop time to get it out for people i literally people to look up. at some web pages now <laughs> it's like you do your research and you see something that looks really interesting it's like no click it off i can't i just can't go there <laughs> yes, because yeah. you never get anything out been there done that <laughs> it's like hole. oh this is a great rabbit hole but um, i'll never leave it if i go down it <laughs> right? it's like sorry alice i have to get Thank back you. to paying my bills in the real world still sadly <laughs> yeah but I uh, do the real world, time, let's destroy that. It's all about building everyday world into Wonderland and not just having to go down a rabbit hole to live in Wonderland because we can have a heaven on earth. And it's just about changing your perspective and being positive and committed to building and working and being the best version of yourself and being a community, a family, and one people under one realm of this shared shared space we call home. And I'm just going to... Definitely. You know, this is a whole other episode, but, you know, what you're talking about using the, <laughs> the metaphor of Alice in Wonderland, and, you know, we talk about rabbit holes. It's like we're living in this Hollywood movie script. Yeah with these you know certain books that were mm. you know shoved down our throats so we read alice in wonderland we see alice in wonderland from the d word you know however many times all these different movies um my understanding is lord of the rings is another one of those books oh, which yeah, kind of makes definitely. me sad because i really like i really liked them when i was 
growing up. I read them several times. Um, but they're all telling us something about this world that we live in. Crazy. Star Wars, you know, Star Trek, it's all, yep. you know, predictive the programming. Ewoks and and, oh, yeah, the whole stuff. and yep. so our perceptual filters are being formed along these lines um, that the controllers have wanted it to be. You know, they've given us so many distractions, mm. so we wouldn't notice what's actually in the environment around us. And exactly, you know, it's just, it just, it really is. It's like we live, we live in a scripted reality. The Truman Show, but it's the, the Lyman Show. Show. We are the okay. Lyman Show. We live under the <laughs> Lyman Show. The untrue man. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, just wanted to make that point. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Once you start, yeah, well, maybe up, we'll have to like, have a oh chat and just, yeah, without any pictures, and we'll just, mm, we just maybe just have a chat and we'll just, just, just go esoteric for a few hours in a few weeks or something. <laughs> right? So, yeah. It's a few weeks that'll definitely have to be an, an, odd, an Odyssey <laughs> sort of video. <laughs> Episode three from now will be us uh, discussing such things as Lord of the Rings, and it's esoteric topics of how there used to be elves giants uh trolls and everything else and shifted to the plane of where they took those uh sky boats and left uh middle earth into uh whatever realm they now are in yeah well there's a bit on that in the whole mount maru um you know mount maru like the uh uh what's it called <laughs> but yeah the black rock and of course what's one of the biggest companies in, in in the world called that owns everything it's called brock but the tree of life right and that's yeah. supposed to go up to the different levels and then, and then they talk about in religion they talk about the most high right the most high the father, and yeah. heaven i'm wondering you know if the center is, and and did, did they knock it over did they blow it up so now that they've literally disconnected our connection to, to the upper realms the right. most to the most high right i don't know there's a whole nother narrative and, there so i could and, yeah, we won't be sure and of somebody uh, somebody just mentioned jules verne and he is another one a hundred percent ah jules verne but i mean they all are i mean He's you know charles charles dickens yeah uh, victor hugo yep. jules verne they're all all of the authors jack yep. london uh, John Steinbeck, um, Leo T. Tolstoy, there are William Shakespeare, who probably was more than one person. They were all part of the narrative <laughs> shapers. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. That's what they were there for. Here's your reality. Mm -hmm. All righty, 233, oh, 234, it was almost 233. All right. Anyone got anything else to add? How are we going? All good? No? All right. Well, everyone remember there's a Perth meetup, uh, 16th of October. So check it out. There's um, It's on Telegram. It's on Facebook, other places. Come down, say hello. And, yeah, thank you all for being here. And thank you, Michelle and Bernie. And we'll be back in. Uh, Bern and I will be back in a week. Uh, hopefully with Paul or someone else and Michelle in a couple of weeks. And we'll be into, um, I've forgotten what you said, bells, bell Belt, towers, Belt, and, bell Belt, Belt towers. And, ringing and all that kind of stuff. Most you can ring my bell. <laughs> all right. Always a pleasure, my friends. Much love yeah. and respect and <laughs> peace be with you all. We Thank you all. You again. Thanks, everybody. And we'll talk to you all.